mean, you, dude, I remember we first dropped surgery and juice. Um, you, I remember you telling me, hey, man, when you get finished, bring it to me. Okay, cool. And I, okay, okay, here, check out. Here, here is a cassette of mm -hmm. surgery or juice, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. I remember one time before we got back on the freeway, that shit was carted up and on the radio, okay? Don McMillan got mad at <laughs> We hadn't got the parts made. Though. We got records. People looking to buy the record, but they can't buy it because we ain't processed it yet. You played the, you played from, we, that's when you had the high bias cassettes. No, they don't know about these the TDK high bias cassettes that would cost you like six bucks a piece, but they were super clean and you could actually dub something from this and you would dub um, uh, one of my records, Surgery of Juice to a cart man put on the radio and it was a hit and we we was like six days from having our first record made. But uh, that that was a time, man, that, you know, you, you can't, you, you can't recreate that, dude. My philosophy was, that even though there were some bigger East Coast records probably that the record companies were pushing, um, I always felt like, you know what, this, is, this West Coast record is not that bad. And I, I said, you know, if I play a West Coast artist record, they're gonna go tell a hundred family members who are gonna go tell another hundred, who go and tell another hundred. I'm gonna have all those people listening to K-Day. There was a strategy there. Uh, in the beginning, and you know, and and I've said this a hundred times, you didn't have to pay me to play your record. If you had a good record, uh, I played it, and you didn't have to make an appointment. Even though we had music days, I think it was Mondays or Tuesdays. I never knew that. <laughs> I never knew that. <laughs> Shut up, man! You never paid me. I no no no. I never knew you got a music day. Well, that was when we met as a music day. I did. And, I, I didn't met. Yeah. We met hanging out. Yeah, we met hanging out. Oh, uh, so, to my knowledge, okay, that was 47 years ago. I so. would listen to what the record companies wanted us to play. This is our new single. Whatever. You, you, you know, know, it was... Uh, I'm playing B-sides, album cuts. Right, right. <laughs> right. See, and people don't understand, man, back then, record companies would do that. I remember I was, uh, another situation, I was working with, uh, I was with uh, K, working with uh, K, uh, K Ace. And I was in the station with Easy Wig, and he played the Tina Marie album in its entirety. And the people from Motown had a fit. What are you <laughs> doing? What are you doing? You can't do that. And this is a badass album. No, you can't do that. And I understand it now. You know, you was, they was kind of uh, unveiling the, the whole gift before they wanted everybody to have it. Man, I pissed off the whole record industry. Um, there was a lot of people that didn't like me. Uh, they grew to like me because, you know, uh, we we played all their music. We just may not focus on that single. Right. You know, uh, give you an example, Salt and Pepper when they brought in Tramp. I said Tramp is good, but I like Push It, that B side. Okay. Ah oh, man, ain't nobody. You know, well, uh, man, I played that. It was about six months, and finally it caught on with the other stations. Uh, same thing with JJ Fad. Uh, even Lisa Lisa. A lot of people don't know that we played a lot of freestyle, but. Uh, her song, I Wonder If I Take You Home, Columbia Records wouldn't even put it out. They wouldn't put it out in the States. They said, nah, we're going to break her overseas. And uh, her manager, uh, Steve, the late uh, Steve, uh, he uh, had brought me a cassette. He said, man, you know, I really want to, you know, do something with this record, but they won't put it out. You know, and it was, I wonder if I take you home. I said, can I play it? <laughs> you know, and uh, we know the, the, you know, that thing went to number one. Uh, my biggest fan, Lonzo, uh, and he used to come to all my birthday parties, was Prince. What, what, a, what a lot of people don't know is that uh, I had a direct connect with Prince's record label, and I also had a direct connect with his pressing plant. Mm -hmm. So I always would steal his music before anybody in the world would get it. Now, most people would get a cease and desist. Prince, Prince you know, he, he would just have somebody call me and, you know, whatever. And uh, his gift to me was when Vanity Six came out and he sent Vanity over in a camisole, a very see-through camisole. <laughs> he said, she came in and she said, uh, Prince just said, you know, he really appreciates what you do, you know, and he loves you to death. And I was like, oh, okay. And I'm sitting here trying, I'm sitting here trying not to look down. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I happened to fall through K-Day that day. 
Were you there that day? I fell through K Day that day in the limousine in front of the station. And it was and she, dude, it was like it was like a commercial. <laughs> Are you going into the station? And I said, that's fucking vanity. Oh shit. <laughs> I'm not lying, okay? She she pulled up, it was a white limo. She asked right. me, went into the station. She wanted to go, she wanted to go in for something, maybe use a restroom. I don't know. But she told me to uh, could have her driver come back for something. No problem, beautiful. No problem. No bullshit. I was there that day. I was there when she came through. And you know, she got she had them eyes, man, that come them come hither eyes that look, she just made a man feel like you might get it, but she know you ain't got nothing coming. Okay. She just had that vibe about it, man. I was a beautiful woman, dude. She she was, was a beautiful yeah. Hey, she was, she was, she was, I'm just fucking with you. She was a very sweet lady. You know, huh? very, very intelligent, very sweet lady. You know, she went on to become a preacher and stuff. Yeah. Oh, wow. What can you say, man? Away, so what are you doing now, man? I, I know what you're doing, but tell them what you're doing these days. You know, I um, just signed a deal recently. Nobody knows about this. Uh, to finally get the 1580 K-Day documentary done. Okay. Uh, the Conweiser brothers, if you remember, they did that movie, The Evers, Miss Evers Boys, won a lot of awards for it. It's going to be a very big Your budget. voice went down, Greg. Greg, uh, your voice went down. You, I'm sorry? Your, your voice went down. You were loud for, you, you were louder a minute ago. Oh, okay. I don't know what that is. I'm talking the same level. Can you okay, still hear me? talking about that. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, we're underway with that. Uh, that's going to be very big. Uh, and the Greg Mack syndicated radio show, which is heard by about eight, eight to 10 million people every week. Um, you know, which is basically K Day on the radio, and, and <laughs> you know, you got your your I call tribute station in town, the K Day that's on, uh, <laughs> but it's not the real thing. Uh, right. But the uh, Greg Mack show is is pretty close as it gets to uh, what you used to hear on K Day. So if you really want to hear what K Day sounds like, you got to hear the show, um, and a few other you know film projects. Uh, almost finished with the book. You know, all the stuff that you've done already, I'm trying to catch up on. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just real optimistic. There's some other things I guess I really can't talk about. But uh, right now, life is good, man. I'm so blessed and happy and, uh, uh, you know, want to get married again one day. And <laughs> <you know? laughs> uh, that's, that's the struggle. And I don't know if you can relate, but that's the struggle when you do what we do. It is a very time consuming, uh, yeah. uh, gotta have a uh, drive that uh, the only person that is in front of you is God. And, you know, I, I, you know, I understand it's supposed to be God, your wife and work, but with me, it's always been God and work. Yeah. And uh, that doesn't go too well. <laughs> so, and I'm still that way. I've, I've always, I tell people now, you know, people that I meet, you know, I just say, look, as long as you understand, I have a wife and her name is job. And yes. so you're not going to, you can be the side piece, but you're not going to be, you're not going to be, uh, you know, I'm, I'm driven, you know, we're getting up there in age, man. There's things I got to get done here. Yeah. I understand that. And I want to get those things done so I can go set my ass down. Okay. I got it, Doc. I got it, man. Dude, I thank you for the interview, man. I appreciate it. We could, we could, you know, we could be on this for another hour or so. We probably man, we could be on it till tomorrow. We got a lot of stories we ain't even touched. Yeah, we ain't talked about Texas yet. <laughs> you talking about backstage Texas? Backstage Texas. We ain't talking about backstage Texas. You know, I was talking about her one time during some interview or something. She actually hit me up like, what? That's really, that's really rude of you. <laughs> She was happy to be around us. Uh, miss me, baby. Miss me. Hey, you know what? It was one girl, man. What was that girl that she played in uh, Last Dragon? Who was, what was her name? Last Dragon? You talking? That was Vanity. No, 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 no. The, she, no, I'm sorry. The, the Last Dragon, uh, she was on the other side with Show Enough. Okay, the sister, she was fine as heck. She was hanging out with us for a while. Uh-huh. And okay. you knew her because we, um, you brought her around. Right. I can't I think of this chick's name, man. My uh, cat, my cat is an outdoor cat, and so like it's really hot where I'm at today. So I brought her inside, you know, when it's really hot. Okay. She keeps me yowling. If you keep, I don't know if you can hear it. I can't hear it. <laughs> like, I want to go outside. You're probably being post production though. Say hi, Alonzo. Say hi. <laughs> Pretty cat. 
Well, All right, Doc. Much love to you, man. I thank you for taking this time out to do an interview with me today and uh, sharing some of this history, dude. Uh, more power to you. Stay corona free. <laughs> do your thing, folks. In the meantime, Mr. Greg Mack, the Mac oh, attack. Boy, you know. when, you, when you listen to me on the wave now, I do it right here at my desk. Do you really? I do not go into the station at all. Wow. Okay. I'm live, I'm live from Palmdale. That's where I'm, 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 I'm live. I'm you good on drive and gas, too. All right, folks. Don't forget oh, to yeah. subscribe and uh, notify. This is Lonzo, the Godfather of West Coast here, but with my man Greg Mack, the master behind the, the air, master behind the airwaves of Los Angeles hip hop. He turned it into a whole other genre. Turned K Day from a regular station to being one of the most powerful stations, most influential stations in hip hop back in the day, folks. Much love to you, Greg. Thanks for having me on, Lonzo. Stay cool, man. We out of here. Peace. All right.